Welcome to the play guide. Now, I've tried to make this as simple as possible, much like my season four guide. Uh, again, obviously the meta's changed, but the previous guide is still prevalent for the Kingly Jagged uh, builds with the finisher. This guide focuses on the Void Gauntlet today and uh, the actual just Plague builds in general. Now, the Plague builds are going to be the best builds to run, in my opinion, especially in the current meta. You can still use the Kingly Jagged builds in my last season four video, but this is going to be your best options, in my opinion. Did my first war with Plague crits yesterday, and man, it makes a huge difference. I'm not going to lie. So, we've got uh, six different builds here. One of them is me i'm trying something new and that is a budget build so i'm showing you the essential perks you need on a two perk setup to make these builds work if you do not have enough gold and that is actually what i'm going to be going for because personally i do not have enough gold for this either i'm going to have to go for a two perk set as well i assume a majority of you might actually find it useful i'm gonna find i found it useful and that's actually part of the reason why i created it because i do think we are uh, in this current like in the current meta shift it is honestly probably worth it just to invest in two perk gear because you don't know what's going to change in two weeks so without further ado we'll start off with the musket guides and then we'll move to the bow guides so we'll start off with uh we'll go with musket life taker because i think that's the the build that uh, everyone's been wanting to see is the updated void gauntlet guide uh so we'll go on with that so starting at the top we're just going to work our way down again you can find all of the links to these on neural buddy in the description below all clearly labeled or you can go to my discord and you can go to the best setup season four section and you can actually see all of them there as well so without further ado let's jump into it so for the plagued musket life taker we are running 350 200 100 this is the highest dps with the i would say the minimum con you would probably want to run in builds these days 50 con is doable in outpost rush but from a competitive standpoint anything below 100 is basically a death sentence so again we're maxing out our damage going decks with the highest scaling for muskets at a 0 0.9 200 ints and we get all those juicy elemental passes you know i've got the consumables here you can you can look at that if you want some of them are war consumables but it is what it is you've got your trees here so scream tether and orb for musket we're running powder power and sticky bomb this is the build that i enjoy the most you can of course drop sticky if you want to run the power uh, stopping power or you can drop stopping power for the first two tiers of shooter stance or even trap if you want to personally again i'm not a trap enjoy i think it's way too clunky and it still needs a much better rework now onto the armor perks again this is the exact same as season the season four guide that i did last week i think so again nature harnessing elemental aversion and health Again, I'm going to say this, you can swap health for Vigor if you want to. Vigor is a very viable option now with all the dot builds that are coming out, especially against Fire Staff. Removing those smaller stacks as fast as you can is definitely an angle. So if you want to, again, swap out health. If there's a weapon perk that you that you don't see here and you might want to run, again, I don't really see any weapon perks on armors being necessary. You can swap out health for that. Health is sort of that dynamic perk that you can swap for whatever you want, really. You could do Vigor and Vigorated weapon perks that is honestly flexible and up to you that again the two essential being harnessing and alley aversion uh leagues we're slotting uh harnessing as well for our uh tangle vine amulets again i'm still using this There's still a little bit of thrust protection in our build i think that's very important just cover all of our bases get a bit of everything in there 15 percent thrust protection is a decent amount from one piece of armor stand recovery obviously a must these days and then health is just a, a cherry on top so for the ring this is much different from the past guides because obviously this is a plague build we are running infected so disease you apply last 31 percent or 32 percent longer i believe it rounds it so effectively people are running invigorated these days invigorated reduces the disease duration so if we put infected on our ring we're getting back that disease that is getting taken away so i think it is a nice product to, uh, ring to run again this is the best setup there's going to be a few things that do change when it comes to the budget build and one of those being not having infected on your ring it, it is i just hate how the meta is changing every few weeks guys i'm not gonna lie it's gonna kill the game uh and i don't know how much longer i'm gonna be making these videos but uh, obviously endless thirst you can swap this for a i think a purifying uh what is it yeah purifying toast uh nimble and uh healing heart if you wanted to on the earring there uh, again with full opals and armor opal and joya you can obviously go with what gems you want with elemental aversion you don't need to run opals and armor but I prefer it going full alley split. That's how, what I enjoy because everyone is dipping into elemental version for range these days. I don't think there's a single range player that's going full thrust. Every bow splits, every musket splits, every obviously mage uh, is obviously elemental 
So, I mean, I like opals. You can go with whatever you want. If you want to go with emeralds, go go for it. If you want to go with slash gems, go for it. It's entirely up to you. Uh, Life Taker, uh, Slow and Tether on there. Absolutely insane. And then obviously Crippling Powder on a musket. We have two sources of almost capped out slow. So yeah, that's pretty disgusting and absolutely why I love this build. Again, uh, Musket, Life Taker, and Bow Life Taker are actually the two highest DPS builds for range in the game. Brutal Heart Rune of Cannon Blast is the uh, Heart Rune that we're going with. Again, nice AoE, good damage. Uh, you can swap it for Stone Form if you want survivability, uh, or you could go for uh, a Bile Bomb if you want even more disease. Again, that's basically. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. So, yeah. Uh, the musket has to be crafted. This fucking sucks. I tried looking for a named Plague Crits achievement musket. It doesn't exist. The closest thing you can get is a musket called the Keratin Musket, which I believe is Vorpal. But effectively, it means you can have Plagued, but you can't have achievement, which fucking sucks. So the only way to get a Crits achievement powder musket is by crafting it. And that's fucking annoying. Uh, and especially with this meta changing every month. I don't know what the fuck AGS is thinking. But yeah, that is the entire Plague Musket uh, build. Next, we'll jump onto the Plague Musket Rapier. This build is good, but it is pretty low DPS. This is more for if you, you know, you like getting in people's face, doing a little bit of movement, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and again, the, the, obviously the mobility and survivability of this build is fantastic as always. So again, not much has changed, obviously, other than us slotting a Rapier. Stats are the same. Musket tree is the same. Again, you can swap sticky for shooters uh stopping or traps uh arm is the same again swap health for vigor uh if you want to uh amulet the same ring is the same earring is the same of course again if you don't want to run endless thirst you can indeed run nimble purifying toast and healing hearts uh and the rapier is officer ceremony and we are using omnidirectional evade as the third on that one i'm pretty sure this is how it works on live they've changed it around and we can now go Vicious, Pin, Backstab, Omni Evade, a fantastic DPS Rapier right there. And then we have our Musket again, has to be crafted. Crippling Powder Burn, Achievement, Plagued Crits. Heart Rune of Cannon Blast, that can either be Heart Rune of uh, Stone, Mending Heart Rune of Stone Form. Or you can do Bile Bomb if you want even more disease. Again, we're going with the, this is a Plagued Crits build. Plagued on Musket, Infected on Ring. Uh, so that is the Plagued Musket Rapier. Now we have the Plagued Musket Bow. So again, stats are the same, 350, 200. Only thing that's changed is we've now slotted our bow. Here's a bow tree. Rain, pin explosive. You can swap pin for triple rappies if you want to. Uh, I think the only reason people really run pin these days, and I run it, uh, is for the animation cancel. Is a fantastic uh, ability to use for that. Uh, and also shooting it into a clump can actually net you a few kills and decent amount of damage. But if you're going for single target, and you don't really care about an animation cancel that ultimately doesn't change too much other than a bit of satisfaction. Triple Rapids is definitely the way to go. So again, armor the same. Tangled Vine Amulets. Ring the same. Amulets Thirst. Uh, and then again, Musket the same as the previous two. And then the Oil Jar. Now this is the nice thing about the bow builds is there's actually a named bow that has both attunements and enchanted and we can slot play crits as the third i wish musket had a named item like this but it is what it is uh again named upgrades are still gonna cost you and knit you around 20k because you need to get a matrix that's around 5k and you need three seals so that is a, a 15k and that will never change in price so again it is still a pricey upgrade but it is at least much more viable uh than the uh plagued musket so again uh enchanted flame attunement and played crits of course attunement doesn't match the rest of our gear that doesn't matter you're losing less than like 20 net damage total not matching your damage with your harnessings and uh rune glasses heart rune of cannon blast a brutal heart rune of cannon blast can be swapped for mending stone form or bile bomb if you would like more disease so again yeah disease infected on ring and then we'll go to the bow build so we've got we'll start off with bow life taker um this is very almost one-to-one -one of Adorian's build again is the highest dps single target range build with the like best uh, best con i guess uh because again stats are changing for single target uh bow that doesn't use a musket so 350 150 150 so we get a lot more con when we run our uh, exclusive bow builds 
uh, you know, 16.6k health there is pretty nice. So again, we've got the Void Gauntlet Tree, the Bow Tree, Scream, Tether, or Rain, Pen, Explosive. You can swap Pen for Rapids. Uh, armor is the same as the Musket builds. Of course, you can swap Health for Vigor, as, uh, as mentioned before. Uh, Life Taker, again, slowing Tether is on it. And then Plague Crits on the Bow, Infected on the Ring. So that, I think, is everything there. Brutal Heart Rune of Cannon Blast, of course. Now for the Plagued Rapier. So this is the second to last build before we jump onto the Budget build. Again, stats are the same as the previous Bow build. 350 150 again this is a good mobility build it's just an all-round good build not near as much damage as the life taker setup uh but again with this you can run the finisher again the reason why you can't run the finisher and i forgot to mention that can't run the uh finisher with the plagued crits musket build uh, is because there's no source of bleed you can't have plagued crits and keenly jagged they're the same perk ball but again with the bow Rain of Arrows procs, procs a bleed, which allows us to use Finishes Harmony still, which is fantastic uh, if you want to use a Bow Rapier setup. Uh, I actually forgot to put that in here, so swap Officer Ceremony for Finishes Harmony, uh, and then you can actually, again, you get the bleed off Rain of Arrows. Our Bow is Oil Jar, Enchanted Flame Achievement Plague Crits. Again, I didn't know about this Bow, so thanks to Dorian for pointing this out. I'm going to put his guide in the description below. He's a bit more of a Bow guy than me. I'm a bit, a bit more focused on muskets, but I just wanted to cover all of the range builds you can do uh for the highest dps or most consistent dps in the game currently again arm is the same as the previous ones alley version harnessing health which can be swapped for vigor if you would like uh again in the you can swap for purifying toast nimble and healing heart if you would like tangle vine amulets and then the brutal heart run of cannon blast which can also be swapped for mending stone form or bile bomb if you want more disease now on to the more interesting build is the disease build or the budget disease build what would you need if you did not have enough gold for a best setup this is my per this is where i'm personally gonna be at because again gold is at an all-time worst right now the economy has never been worse the game is literally dying in masses because of how shit the economy is with these consistent meta changes don't get me wrong the meta changes are fantastic but you need to compensate in faster gear acquisition and reduce the gold sinks if that is going to happen without further ado again this is the budget setup so again ignore the stats and you actually just i want you to look at the previous builds when it comes to stats and trees because all we're looking at in this is the musket and bow perks and the armor and jewelry perks so for the helmets and the or just the armor in general the two essential perks are elemental aversion and nature harnessing if you wanted to even go more budget the only essential perk on your armor needed for a one perk setup if you're really povo is elemental aversion uh, again you should should be able to get your artifacts upgraded at the minimum i feel like that's easier to do uh the only thing that weighs you down in the artifact upgrades is the dark matter of course which is just a slog essential perks harnessing alia version uh hopefully uh you can get your upgraded tangle vine so you can add stem recovery to that that is an essential setup if you can't a two perk amulet with thrust protection and stam recovery will do you okay you've also got a uh, two perka ring here now we've dropped infected because i definitely want you you definitely want to keep your damage that seven percent damage of course it's only about 3.5 percent increased total because we're splits but that's fine it is still a 3.5 percent damage increase which is a decent amount and then of course hardy uh, which is obviously a must in any build these days especially light so you have to drop infected if you want to make this work uh, for a cheap build hopefully you can get your endless host upgraded of course if you can't you would go a two perker with purifying toast and i would probably say nimble you don't really need healing heart healing heart is sort of a qual perk uh for the two perker bow attunement and plagued crits for the two perker musket crippling power burn and plague crits you could go achievement over crippling power burn but in my opinion the utility of crippling power burn is just too good uh, again uh brutal heart rune of cannon blast uh, you can swap that for stone form and uh bile bomb if you want with disease uh so yeah this is the budget perks again the two essentials and all of these are linked in the description uh yeah i'll see you guys in the next one peace